All praises to Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai. Brakatha Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Sham Rekar Kodash. Give double honors to our apostles of the Great Millstone who taught us this truth. And salutations to our sincere brothers that goes out on the highways and the byways, risking their lives. And shalom to our sincere brothers and sisters supporting this ministry. Shalom. Yeah, I want to talk about the fourth dimension here. As you know, when it comes to the fourth dimension, we are living in the third dimension. But in the spirit world above the heavens is known as the fourth dimension. We can't even fathom that. We might have an idea through the scriptures, right? Or where, where people, um, you know, these scientists, they try to explain um, what it's about. But um, I'm going to play this video first and to get a little idea what the fourth dimension seems to be like. All right. So watch this first, please. The worldly picture you see right here is called the Tesseract. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some understanding as to what this is and what the fourth spatial dimension is. First of all, to understand the fourth dimension, you will need a very strong grasp of all the dimensions preceding it. So let's start with the zeroth dimension. Imagine this dot to be an infinitely small point in space. For example, when you draw a point like this on a simple graph, you are essentially creating an infinitely small point in the zeroth dimension. The zeroth dimension has no length, height, or width involved. Thus, meaning there is no volume, which can seem kind of weird. Some practical examples of using this dimension would be from the ideal gas law. When using Newton's laws to create an equation for the pressure of a gas in a container, the particles are assumed to have no volume and therefore are in the zeroth dimension. If you take this point and extend it into a line, that is, taking two different points and connecting them, you have the first dimension. The first dimension has length, but no width or height. Similarly, from the first dimension, where you take two points and connect them, if you take two lines and connect them, you end up with a square, or the second dimension. The second dimension has length and width, but no height. If you take two squares and connect all of their points, you end up with a cube, or the third dimension. The third dimension has length, width, and height. Here is a better picture showing the third dimension. Another way to describe length, width, and height could be on a graph, such as x, y, and z. You could also think of it this way. Whatever room you are in, look at a top or a bottom corner. See how there are three lines that connect all at one point? Each of those lines are perpendicular from each other. So hopefully you guys see a pattern here. Going up in dimensions utilizes all of the previous dimensions. To get to the first dimension, you have to start with two points. To get to the second dimension, you have to start with two lines. To get to the third dimension, you have to start with two squares. And with every increase in dimension, you are basically adding a new direction. Each new direction is perpendicular from all of the other directions. Thus, to get to the fourth dimension, you have to start with two cubes and connect them. As you see in this picture, the yellow lines connect two cubes. Imagine the yellow lines as lines that are perpendicular from all other three directions, x, y, and z. The only issue with looking at this picture is that you are looking at it from a two-dimensional computer screen or phone screen, so it just looks like a bunch of messed up lines. So, instead of having you imagine a new fourth direction, which is basically impossible, 
I'll show you some good examples that can help you conceptualize the fourth dimension just a little bit better. If you take a cube and unfold it, as shown in this video, you end up with some squares shaped as a cross in the second dimension. Likewise, if you take a tesseract and unfold it, you end up with some cubes shaped as a cross in the third dimension. Suppose there is a world with two-dimensional creatures, that is, a creature who can only see in two directions. If this two-dimensional creature was introduced to a three-dimensional creature, such as a human, he would only see a two-dimensional cross-section image of us as we pass through their world. Likewise, if a fourth dimensional creature was passing through our 3D world, we would only see slivers of that creature, which is really creepy in my opinion. Imagine the sun is directly above these objects. As you see, the shadow from a one dimensional object, the line, is a point. A shadow from a two dimensional object, the square, is a line, and a shadow from a three-dimensional object, the cube, is a square. Thus, the shadow of a tesseract, or a fourth-dimensional object, would be a cube. The only issue about this animation is that the tesseract we see moving can only be interpreted by us humans as a 3D object, because we are looking at it from a 2D screen. So hopefully you guys have a little bit of a better understanding as to what the fourth spatial dimension is and what a tesseract is. I even have a hard time figuring it out, but I mean, we're humans. It's like explaining a color to someone, you know, you just, you really can't. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and maybe in the next video I can talk about how the fourth dimension could also be time. Right, there you go. So that's about the fourth dimension. So I'm not sure if you could get your head around it. But in um in Ezekiel ten, all right, the cha um Ezekiel um chapter ten, right, it talks about the cherubims and wheels. Okay? And a cherubim, let me go let me go look for the definition of a cherubim. Here's a second. Right. A cherubim. What is a cherubim in the Bible? The cherubs also moved like flashes of lightning in Ezekiel chapter 10. Another full description of a cherubim appears with slight differences in details. Three of four faces are the same, man, lion, eagle, but where chapter one has the face of an ox, right? Ezekiel 10 and 14 says the face of a cherub, right? So I'm going to go to that Ezekiel, as I said, chapter 10, and we know that as angels, okay? And obviously the angels are in the spirit world and that's a fourth dimension. So, you know, sometimes we, 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 we joke around and say, you know, if we see an angel, you bug out, right? And I'm going to show you how, right? Um, I'm going to start at 9. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 9. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by another cherub and the appearance of the wheels was like was the color of barrel stone okay and you know when we see chariots right it's got a barrel color right and silver okay it changes different colors beautiful colors 
All right. So let me jump down to um, verse 14. Okay. And every one had four faces. The first face was a face of a cherub. And the second face was the face of a man. And the third face was of a lion. And the fourth face of an eagle. All right. Surely, if you saw that, definitely it would blow your brains. Okay. Because we are living in the third dimension. Right. So you can imagine how powerful that, that spirit world is. Right. Above the heavens. Verse 15. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Cheb Chebar. Chebar. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherub cherubims lifted up their wings to the mount, up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them when they stood these when they stood these stood and when they were lifted up these lifted up themselves also for the spirit of the living creature was in them right i'm going to read on then the glory of the lord yahweh departed from all of the thr threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims and the, the cherubims lifted up the wings, their wings, and mounted up from the earth in, the, in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them. And everyone stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord, Yahweh's house. And the glory of the power of Israel was over them above. He says it's all about Israel. Israel, Israel, Israel. Yahweh Basham Yahshai's chosen people. Okay. This is living, this is the living creature, verse 20, that I saw under the power of Israel by the rivers of Chebar or Chebar. And I knew that they were the cherubims, right? Those are the spirits, the holy angels. Everyone had four faces, a piece, and every one four wings, and he and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. Verse 22, and the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Chibar, their appearances and themselves. They went every one straight forward. All right, so that's all I wanted to bring out, right? That that we are living in the third dimension, okay? You have the first, second, third, as it was explained here in the in the um, in that video, and we are in the third dimension. But the fourth dimension, wow, that big jump from three to four, right? That gap in between is so supernatural, right? And we can't fathom that. If we ever, if we see an angel, we 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 always talk about we we we'll bug out, all right? You go crazy if you saw that, all right? A creature with four faces, huh? So so that's what I wanted to bring out, brothers and sisters, um, right? About the 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 spirit world, right? The fourth dimension okay that's what i wanted to bring out that fourth dimension is a beautiful dimension to be in all right so with that i give all praises to yahweh basham yahweh shai and double honors to our apostles of great maidstone and to all our brothers that goes out on the highway highways and the byways teaching his truth love to you love to you brothers shalom